congratulations on the movie. Uh, we just spoke to Ridian, the writer, and he said that you'd said that at the beginning of the movie, you don't necessarily have to like your character, you just have to kind of understand her journey. I mean, was that important to you? Because he said that something that you said, was that important to you in terms of the character and the story? Yeah, I think I always think like that. You know, I mean, I, I, I always fight against likability as far as particularly women on screen go. You know, we're always told that we have to be likable. and. And I was interested in her because, no, a lot of the things that she does aren't particularly likeable, but I think it's very important that you understand where she's coming from. And I think if this film works, I hope it does, then it's because you understand the different points of view that the people are coming from. I think that's really important. Thanks so much. Thank Cheers. You. you play some darker characters more recently, Big Little Liars. Congratulations. Yeah, Absolutely thank you amazing. Was it nice to play someone that was a little bit different? And you, as an actor, you kind of step out of, of that into a different uh, playing field, if you like. Yeah, it was nice to do something light and fun like a World War II movie set in Germany <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> get some levity in there uh, no it's totally the character is quite different from most of the other characters I've played in the, the past couple of years uh, but that's always something I look for obviously you want when you come off a, a project you want to find something that's totally different and a character that represents something else and um, where you get to explore something else within yourself uh, so um, it was, I, I was hooked when I got the script. I thought it was uh, just so well written and such an interesting story and um, told in a very different way. And it was refreshing to read a, uh, a, a story in, in which the German is not uh, the bad guy, uh, nor the hero, that he's a real human being, that he's complicated and complex and um, uh, it, that it was just kind of wonderful, quite wonderful to jump in to, to explore that. So, I mean, the dynamic between you and Kira is fantastic, but the three of you together, obviously, there's this kind of love triangle, but also they're characters who are looking for kind of catharsis, you know, looking for uh, resonance in their life, if you like. I mean, yeah. was it fun to play with that? Because it's quite a uh, touching subject anyway, but then you have this kind of love story in the middle of it. Yeah, well, they're all grieving, and they, they all carry this... Uh, this hole in their souls. Stefan lost his wife. They lost their their son, um, and and that is also how Stefan and, and, and uh, Rachel Kerr's character connect. Because uh, in the beginning, there's a lot of animosity there. They don't like each other, but that's how they see the humanity in each other. Uh, the realization that oh, this person is going through what I'm going through. Tell us a little bit about how you got involved and what was it about the script that kind of spoke to you? Um, well, you know, I met with James, uh, he's brilliant um, uh, and I love the script. I hadn't read the book uh, until after I got cast, um, but fell in love with the story. I thought it was so brilliant and a story that needed to be told and particularly because it was a story that came from him and his and his family background. Yeah, we just spoke to him about that and he was, he was quite chuffed that that they oh told the God, story but managed to bring it well. amazingly to the screen in such an amazing way. And also for his family as well, who I think are here. Um, so that must be, it's going to be amazing for them to watch this tonight, I think. Uh, tell me a little bit about working with, with Kira, because you have some, some kind of fortish scenes uh, together. Tell us about the experience of that. Yeah, so um, behind, uh, off screen, um, she, we had a really lovely time. I think she is so warm and so professional and I really admire her and what she does. I think she's so amazing to watch. And um, so working with her in that capacity was just stunning. Um, but what we really enjoyed was um, having those sort of like bitchy moments over cups of teas, um, which was really lovely. I, I, I was really lucky to work with her. Was there great. much uh, kind of reference points for you in terms of that culture, if you like, in, in Germany at that time and those, those people? No, Did you get much? I mean, um, I've always been drawn to that period in history. Um, but as I said um, earlier this evening, um, the stories of the Second World War we've seen before, but we don't know very much about what happened in the aftermath, and that's certainly something that I didn't know anything about. So um, that's what was really great. When you get your hands on the book, you get to sort of invest in something that already exists and then tell it in a whole different way. And for, um, for you, after you've done this, what's, what's next for you? Um, so uh, Peaky Blinders and Downton Abbey, the film, come out in September, I think. Yeah, so Peaky Blinders 5. I didn't know you were in that. We spoke to Julian Fellows a couple of weeks ago and he was about to watch the first kind of cut of it, I guess. Okay. But it's, he said, even for me, it's pretty, pretty secretive. Uh, I can yeah. imagine it was the same for you on you guys on set. Oh, yeah. I don't even think I can tell who I'm playing. So, yeah. So, yeah. It's that secret. The d <laughs> We'll probably see you again then, I'm sure. We just spoke to Ridian, the screenwriter. Oh, did it's you? kind of a story about his family yeah. and everything else. I mean, was he kind of a, a good source, if you like, for you as an actor? Or was it more about the, the screenwriter? Yeah, he was so? there. He actually... 
you know, the script was great. You know, it's like there wasn't much alteration with the script. It was very well written and a very beautiful story. And and um, he was just a, a passenger at that part. You know, he'd done his bit and he was like, I think any good writer is happy to let other people bring to it what they want to get out of it. Um, and I remember having a wonderful conversation with him about his life, but he wasn't like, you know, I want you to give justice to this. He was fascinated about what we were bringing to it and what we were seeing that he didn't see, you know? And um, I thought it was wonderful what he did. For you as an actor, I mean, you've played some, some amazing roles, obviously Mudbound to someone like John Connor in Terminator. Are you, are you at a stage in your career where you're enjoying kind of stepping into different, different yeah. ballparks, if you like? Yeah, I do, I love it. Yeah, I'm, you know, I've kind of I've been very lucky and I've worked very hard to cross genres. You know, cross continents as well. English. This is an English film. I just did a HBO thing with Helen Mirren, which was you know English as well. Yeah. And you know, before I got Pet Cemetery next, which is a you know, big American. I mean, I'm you know, and then I do Australian stuff. So I love that. You know, you want variety and a great, rich career and meet some you know interesting people and tell stories that connect. You know. I'm mean, ask you about the relationship with you and Kira. I mean, it's yeah. uh, a very really heartfelt. They're obviously, they're both grieving. Uh, yeah. Both have different kind of outlets for their yeah. for their grief. I mean, was that a tricky relationship to grasp between the two of you? Or was yeah, it quite really easy? tricky. Well, you don't want to you don't want to open or shut the door too soon or too late. You know, you want to let it breathe and let it be what it is. I mean, people are used to seeing love stories. You think three people, two men and a woman, triangle, you know, betrayal, whatever. But it's not about that. You know, it truly is about about finding what you want. And, and fighting for that, I guess, and, and building it, and thinking, you know, you don't have a right. I mean, Lubert says it, so I don't owe him my happiness, you know. He's lost everything, even though I lost the war and whatever. We're not all criminals, and, you know, we've suffered as well. The Germans suffered, and it's the same thing for Rachel. The intimacy between them and, you know, and a, I mean, Lewis is afraid of Rachel, afraid of uh, feminine qualities, you know, because he doesn't know how to deal with that anymore, you know, and it must have been hard for those men in that war to have been away and fought and been warriors and remote and locked up and seen what they'd done and done what they'd done to then, you know, come home and be husbands and, and fathers, you know. Just finally, very quickly, I wanted to ask you about Pet Cemetery. We've just seen the yeah. full trailer. Oh, did you, you like read, it? read the book. It looks like it's going to be yeah, quite a scary. And I yeah. know the books, so I know the kind of the characters. Yeah. I mean, what was that ride like? Because Stephen yeah. King's kind of having this big renaissance in a minute. Yeah, that was an intense ride. Was, you know, it's not a character I'd go back to. It was very hard. Yeah. You know, it was, you know, I mean, that's, you've read the book. It's, it goes beyond horror to be deeply psychologically disturbing. You know, in a, in a Frankenstein, you know, even the monster that's created and your own responsibility for that. I mean, it's, I mean, I loved it. I really loved it. I couldn't let it go. You know, I mean, uh, you know, that said, you know, when you're, you know, at 4 a.m. digging graves and, and busting your nails, and you just go, you know, I didn't know I was getting into it at times. But, but um, yeah, King came out recently and said, this is one hell of a frightening movie. Thank you so yeah, much for good. your time. Absolute Cheers. pleasure. Oh, Cheers. Yeah, I hope so, yeah, I hope so as well. Yeah. Tell me, what was it about this this story and this project? Because there's, there's lots of different things going on in this movie. For you as a filmmaker, what did you see in it that, that made you want to make the film? I think when I read the aftermath, the screenplay, I saw two things. I was absolutely astonished by the historical moment that this was an era I'd known nothing about, the end of the Second World War and what the British did in Germany and what they achieved in terms of reviving the German people, our generosity at that moment, that just warmed the cockles of my heart. And the other thing I saw was a great human drama, a great romance, if you like, but it had real redemption at the end of it. You know, each of the characters go on an extraordinary journey during the course of the film. And I thought as a director who's interested in performance, that was something I would just revel in bringing out for a greater public. You know, one thing I, when I watch the movie, there is this, as you say, element of kind of human catharsis and, and kind of making mistakes, you know, making mistakes, but learning from and everything else. Was it those moments that were, were the trickiest to bring onto the screen or was it the kind of the war elements that were more tricky? Uh, you know, I think the detail of the performance is the trickiest thing to bring out on screen because it's very subtly calibrated. If the um, actors or if the characters are too negative, then the audience can turn away from them. One of the interesting things Kira Knightley said to me very early was she didn't, feel that Rachel Morgan had to be wholly light throughout the entire film, that she could arrive with quite a negative, sort of cold almost exterior, because that's what she's feeling about the German people, and about her husband and about the grief that she suffered. Um, but actually, I think what was important, that she really plotted how we would warm to Rachel and actually understand her. And I think that was brilliantly performed by her. 
Um, so I would say the performance was definitely the most important and the trickiest thing to pull off. After you did Testament of Youth, was this kind of a natural progression for you as a filmmaker or was it just kind of accidental that this was the next, next project, if you like? That's a good question. I think they're obviously connected because they're both about women in war, but I see them as very different. A Testament of Youth was about memory and how to memorialise the dead. This is about reconciliation and moving on. It's, it's in a way a more redemptive film than Testament of Youth. But I am drawn to female stories and I'm drawn to quite traumatic stories um, because I'm inspired by filmmakers in the past who've done those kinds of films. Um, I, one thing, I don't know if you can tell me if this is true or not, on your IMDb, another big female uh, protagonist like, is the Ing Ing Ingmar Berman Bergman Ingrid, film, yeah. Ingrid Bergman film yeah. that's coming out. Uh, your name's been linked to it. Yes. Is there any movement on that yet? Because it's there kind is. of in production, if you like. Uh, yeah, there's movement, but I'm not allowed to say what it is yet. It's one of those, There's is no it? Ink. Dried or anything, <laughs> so I can't really say. But, I mean, if you were to, to do that, what was kind of the, what would be the draw for you as a filmmaker to that particular story? Be this way. What would be the draw for you as a filmmaker to, well, to her? Um, I think, to be honest, I mean, it sounds like I'm setting a theme here, but I mean, they're amazing individuals. Ingrid Bergman, she was just an enormous Hollywood icon, but very special, sort of outside the system, but forced to be in the system. And yet she meets this war photographer, Robert Kappa, who was you know, the war photographer, you like, in the Second World War. And he was a rebel and a maverick. And almost they were like two pieces of the jigsaw just clicking in this very sort of Hollywood world. And I was interested to see how that sort of collision with the system would play out. And it's an amazing story. Tell me about the kind of the, the, the genesis of the, the project in the first instance, because it's based on your grandparents, I believe. It is. My grandfather was a governor of Pinneberg outside Hamburg at the end of the Second World War. And he did a very unusual thing. He requisitioned a house. Uh, the British requisition properties because they were there to rebuild the country and rather than throw the owners of the house out which is what most people did he let them live in the house had he not done that we wouldn't be standing here today because that meant former enemies living together in a house for five years in real life and uh, so I always thought that's an incredible setup for a story I've done my own thing with it I've taken it you know to other places both in book form and script form um, but yeah, I owe a shout out for Walter Brook, my, my grandfather. <laughs> what was the reaction from kind of your family when you kind of pitched, I guess, pitched them the idea that you were gonna, gonna do this? Well, my dad told me the story in sort of real depth, probably in about 2001, fairly recently in terms of my life. But, um, and I said to him straight after, I have to write this. I don't know what form it is, a film, a book, a play. Um, I knew I didn't want to write a straight history or memoir. I felt I had to sort of own the story imaginatively to tell it well. Um, and actually, my dad is incredibly supportive throughout the process. You know, I, a lot of the research, research I did, I relied on his memories of uh, living in that house. And my uncle too, my uncle Colin. So I owe them a lot um, in terms of formulating the texture for the story. Um, so, yeah, it's been a sort of family project, really. Uh, in terms of um, uh, Hollywood producers and whatever coming to you, I mean, uh, were you glad that you were kind of semi-kept in the process of them making a movie? I mean, were you happy that it was going to be made into a movie or were you kind of resistant in the beginning? Well, the, the project has an unusual genesis. I wrote it as a script, actually, before I wrote it as a book. Um, I wanted to write it as a book. I'd written a chapter and I had to go back to... The book got commissioned after the script got commissioned. Um, so in a way, it was quite handy because I did both at the same time. So I was already thinking it cinematically when I was writing it. So... It wasn't a huge surprise, but um, <coughs> films, um, lots of things have to happen for a film to get made. So you don't rely on the fact that it's going to happen. Um, many hoops to jump through. Uh, it's always something of a miracle when you get to this moment, here you are, you know, you're actually looking at a film. I have actually done some work. <laughs> here we are. And it's given gainful employ to a lot of people, yeah. including you. <laughs> yeah, I was here talking about it. Uh, I mean, when you, when you were told it was going to be James, I mean, what made him kind of the perfect filmmaker? Because he obviously did Testament of Youth, which is a similar, it's a different era, but kind of similar. He's there, so I must be polite. Yes. <laughs> no, James um, is a very sensitive filmmaker, I think. He's very painterly. Uh, and the film actually feels like a proper piece of cinema. It doesn't, it, you know, it should be seen in the cinema, I think. I mean, not that it won't work on television, but it's one of those films that really feels like a piece of you know I'm going to a movie when I'm watching it um, it's very beautiful and I think he was also very sensitive to the intimate elements of the film because um, the film perhaps more than the book focuses on the relational you know the relational aspects uh, and 
there's a micro and macro element to the whole story. You know, there's the how do you rebuild a marriage element, and there's how do you be re re rebuild a country element. Um, and I think James has done that beautifully. I think I handle it very beautifully. Um, it, it's uh, yeah. I, when I first, I couldn't compute the film for the first two viewings because I, I knew I knew too much, you know. I, but the third time I saw it, I was actually able to see it as its own, you know, its own thing. Yeah. You can great in a movie with a period of time, and then you have a premiere tonight. Yeah. Does that mean that you that you gave it an extra thought to what you're wearing tonight? Uh, I have a stylist and a hair person and a makeup person for tonight and that doesn't happen every day. So definitely, yes, I gave it extra thought. <laughs> yeah, because of the seriousness of the movie, I believe. Did I give it more thought than the movie? I hope not. I hope not. <laughs> um, no, I mean, different thought. You know, I mean, when, when you're creating costumes and a look for a character, it has to feel right for that particular character, you know, and it's, um, it's about telling a story through those clothes. So I think I always really enjoy working with costume designers to do that. Um, it's part of the job that I, I really like. Obviously, it's not on me. It's completely on the costume designer, but I definitely always say whether it feels right for the person or wrong. Watching. Hey, you guys. Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? Indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey, 